Hey, welcome back. Tonight's lesson, we're going to talk about adding materials. Uh, we're going to have an extrusion with the draft. We're also going to go in two different directions with draft out and draft in. We're going to have a revolve cut and we're going to have a swept cut along in this area here. And we're also going to add a configuration where we change the size of our little cutting insert. Now, these cutting inserts are just merely for reference. They are not to any industrial size or anything. So don't think that you can just order something along the lines of this. So dimensionally, as we're looking at this thing, um, we've got a lot of dimensions out here. So our top view, we've got a 3 8 inscribed circle as far as our size, and it's also 35 degrees. Those are the two things that I'm really concerned about with our top view. And then we've got an auxiliary view down here that we've got a 10 thousandths a land up at the top, and it's going to be 180 thousandths thick overall. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and make sure that you've got your SOLIDWORKS open. And make sure that you are also in inch pounds seconds so let's go ahead and start with a new part uh, please verify that you are in inch pounds seconds that's down here on the bottom right hand side we want to start with an extrusion and we're going to start on the uh, top plane so extrusion pick the top plane pick extrusion now we're ready to start drawing sketches automatically moves us over to sketch mode i'm going to come up and grab a circle and i want to place it right in this area and I also want to make this circle for construction. I don't really want it to affect my model itself. So come up and we want to select the line command. And we're just going to draw four lines. Doesn't really matter where they are. Let me start over. Mouse is giving me a fit. So I want to select the line command. Doesn't really matter where we place them. We want to place them in this general area, in this general shape. We're going to add a bunch of relations. I'm going to explain the relations as we go along. So I've closed this off and I've hit my escape command just to make sure that I don't have anything selected. So let's come up and select, uh, select add relations. Make sure that nothing is selected over here in your uh, selection window. I want to pick the end point of the first line and the last line that we drew, the point of origin, and this point on the far right side. I want to make all three of those horizontal from one another. Next, I would like to select something completely independent of those two. So if I pick this uh, inside circle or inscribed circle which is going to become and one of these lines I want to make that tangent I also want to make it tangent with another line so I select a completely independent line select the circle again make it tangent something completely independent the circle tangent and lastly this line and the circle again and tangent now we're going to need one more relation in this I want to select one of these lines and this opposite one and I'm going to make both of those equal so that should keep us uh, oriented fairly well we're going to make sure that we come up and select a smart dimension command I'm going to pick the circle so this is where we're going to get our size from from and that's 0.375 so it's going to automatically scale for you and now we need an angle in between these two so I'll pick that and it's going to be 35 now we should be fully defined as I look at as I look at our, our reference number over here, notice it's got 1.25 out here. So let's go back and double check that. I'm going to put another dimension on it. Even though we are fully defined, we're going to make this driven. We're going to make this dimension driven by the rest of it. So I'll place it down and it says make this dimension driven. Yes. So that means that it's really not controlling anything. So I click out in the space. Notice how it's kind of a ghosted gray and everything is black or fully defined. So let's go ahead and exit our sketch and we should still be in the uh, extrusion command. Now this upper uh, portion of it, we're going to head uphill as it's going. So I'm going to give it 0 0.01, like it said in our auxiliary view. But I want to create a draft angle on here. So I select draft, <coughs> and I want to pick draft outward. Now I'm going to zoom way in up so you can kind of see what's going on. So as soon as I select draft outward, that thing, the uh, feature actually is, um, drafts out instead of in. You can toggle it as many times as you want, but just make sure that we have it selected as draft outward. Now, I also want to go the opposite direction as well. So this is going to be a blind uh, command. I want it to be 0.17 since we already have 0.01 up here. We know that our part is 0.18 thick, but our draft, I want to go ahead and select draft, make sure that it's turned on. This is going to be six degrees, but I want it to draft inward. So we have one going out and one going in. The uh, reason why we know that is we look down here at our auxiliary view, we have 3 degrees and 6 degrees off of 90. All right, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. So we now have our first boss extrude. Um, we're ready to uh, com 
we're ready to create our uh, hole in there for our ISO screw. So let's come up and we want to select the uh, front plane to, for a reference, and then we select Revolve Cut, and then it should orient normal to you like this. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and I want to come pick a line command. I'm going to come up to the very top of my part, not necessarily the origin this time, but the very top of the part. One click, pull it down, second, third, up. I want to come out. I'm still in the line command, but if I tickle this down here, it puts me in the arc command, so I'm going to place it here. And then I'll draw one more line, and then I close this off so I have a fully enclosed sketch. Now I'm still in the line command. I come up to this top endpoint, which I just terminated everything with. One click, hold down, pull it up, and release. And I'm going to make that for construction. The reason why I did that is that's going to be the axis that we're going to uh, revolve everything around. So let's use some smart dimensions as we look at our, our drawing here. So we have... 180, 100, 30, and it looks like we've got a 10,000 radius and an 80,000 radius. So let's go back here and take a look at this. So we want to come up and select uh, this radius, and that was 0.08. This dimension was 0.03. And now we're ready to add some diameter dimensions. So I want to pick this vertical line, and then I want to pick my center line or my axis that we're going to revolve around. I stay on this left hand side where the most majority of my sketch is. It's just a linear dimension. But if I pull it to the opposite side of that, it doubles that dimension for me. So I want to place it down. And then that was going to be 0.1. Now, as I'm looking at my mouse pointer, it still shows that I have an axis and that I have a D for doubling dimensions. So I want to pick this upper one, place it down, and it was 0.18. So now my sketch is fully defined, but I know that there was a 10,000 radius right here as well. So I'm going to come up and select a sketch fillet. And I want to give it a 0 0.01 uh, dimension. And I come pick this endpoint right here. Gives me the preview. Keep the corners constrained. And I do accept it. So now we're still fully defined. And when I exit our sketch, it's going to create this revolve cut in here. And we want to go ahead and accept that as well. So now this thing has some radiuses on the outside. Now the radius is the same size all the way around. But what I want to do is I want to select these two corners individual of these two corners most of the time these are the ones that change and these are the ones that typically will stay the same so let's come up and select a fillet command uh, let's change the size to 0 0.03 and now i want to pick this edge and then this edge now there's a pretty neat trick i don't have to rotate it around to pick this back side i can come over here and just hover over for a little while it gives me the preview of that little orange line right there so i want to accept it then i will come down and i can pick that line as well so now I'm, I'm good to accept it. So I want to come up and select a fillet command again. I want to come over here to this side. I want to pick the edge and I want to pick this edge. Same thing on this side. Pick this one and then this one. 0.03 as well and we accept it. So we're working our way around here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we have um, like a chip breaker that's up in here. So this is going to be where we do our sweep command or swept cut. So everybody, we want to select the sketch tab and then we want to select sketch. Just because you select the sketch tab does not mean that you've selected sketch. So come up and select sketch. It's going to ask where you want to do it or what plane you want it on. I want this very top surface. So we pick it. It should orient normal to you. If it doesn't, use a control A command. I want to use the offset entities. Um, I want to pick this outer edge. It's going the wrong direction and it's awfully big as well. So I want to make that 0 0.01. And it's not on the part itself. So I come over here to our tree and I'm going to reverse it. Now it is. So I accept it. Now I need a regular line. So I'm going to come up and pick this endpoint, pull it out, place it in that area somewhere. Uh, I need to select it again because I didn't terminate mine correctly. So endpoint here now we have two lines so I want to add a relation have nothing selected over here so I want this line and this line to be equal and I want this arc and this line to be tangent and now we need one dimension on here so I'm going to place it here and I think it was 0.15 and I think it was in this direction so I'm going to place it down and say 0.15 I come back to our drawing and verify it, and it is 
So let's go back to our model. Now we are fully defined in this sketch and we're going to exit this sketch. All right. So now I'll just rotate my model around where I can kind of see something going on. We're going to need to uh, create a plane where we can create another a profile to sweep along this. This is going to be our path that we're going to sweep along. So come up to your features tab, open it up over here at reference geometry, drop that down and we want to select a plane. It may take just a moment for it to pull up. So our first reference is going to be this line itself and then our second reference is going to be the end point of that line. So what that does is it develops those three points that we're going to need to develop our plane. We're fully defined. So we're able to exit and now we can create a sketch on that plane. Now notice mine still highlighted baby blue so that means that it's in the cache and we can select the sketch tab and select sketch and it automatically recognizes that it's on that plane. So I'm going to use my control 8 command and orient it like this. Now that profile that we have in our drawing is going to be in detail B. Um, I'm going to see if I can make that a little bit larger and then slide it over. So we're 10 thousandths from the edge which we've already established that. We have an arc length of uh, 15 thousandths of an inch and the radius of 0 0.008 or 8 thousandths of an inch. All right, so I'm going to come up and just pick a regular circle, draw it like this. I want to get a line, create a line over here like this. I'm going to use my trim command. I like trim closest because it gets most everything that I want. I'm pretty used to it. That's the one that I use all the time. Uh, so now I want to draw this to center line, mainly because they don't cost anything and they make your life really easy in some cases, and this one will help us out quite a bit. So we want to select a smart dimension. I'm going to pick my radius, and it was 0 0.008. Um, then we had arc length. Now this one's a little bit tricky. So we pick the end point, the end point, and then we pick the radius itself, then place it down. We said that was 0 0.015. All right, so we know that that was has to be attached to this somehow or some way. I'm going to hide this plane as well because it's kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to click on this, then I select the eyeball or the glasses. And now I want to add a relation. So the relation that I want is this top midpoint of our horizontal line or the reference center line that we have. And then I want to pick our path that we want to sweep along and then I want to add a Pierce relationship and it moves it down and puts it on that path so we can now sweep it along. So we are fully defined. We are good to exit the sketch. All right. So I clicked out in the modeling space so it terminated whether I had that or not. So now I want to go back to the features command. Now your sweep is going to require two selections. So I don't have a selection here, but what I want to do is I want to pick the last sketch that we drew and then the path was going to be this path that we have here and then I want to accept it. Now I did notice that when we were looking at the drawing that I had out for the internet that it didn't have, um, that blends can be five thousandths of an inch. So let's come up and select a fillet command. And let's make it 0.005. And now I want to come down and this little edge right here where those two meet, let's go ahead and pick that. Uh, if you want to look at your full preview, make sure that you have that on and go ahead and accept it as well. All right, so we got some edge blends in here. So if we were to have that in a punch when we're repressing this, uh, that's the way that we would want to have that. Now, we, want to, we don't want to have to go through that again. We just want to mirror that across. Um, so I come hover over my planes and it's just like looking into a mirror itself. So I want to select the right plane I want to come up and then select my mirror command and then it's going to ask what features I want. Uh, we can pick it from over here in the graphics area but I would just as soon pick it um, in the tree. So I pick the cut sweep and then I pick the fillet. It gives me my preview and that is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and accept it. I'm going to use my control 7 command and uh, have this thing orient in the isometric view. Now what we talked about was uh, creating a configuration. So we want a, a different configuration and then we're going to add some material at the end of this. So we're going to come up to our configuration manager. Uh, this is default. If I click on the word itself and then click again, it allows me to rename it. So I'm going to say um, finished. So that's how we can kind of keep that. And now I want to come up and add a configuration. So I go to part one configuration, right click, and then add configuration. And I'm gonna call this one pre-center. And then I want to accept it. 
All right, so now I have a finished part and a pre-center part. Notice this one has green in it, and this one does not have. It is a ghosted out, so we are working in this one. So now what I want to do is I want to insert a feature, and I want to scale this thing up. I want to make it a little bit larger because uh, if we were to press this in some, some form or something, it's going to shrink down when we get ready to center this. So my uniform scaling, and I want to make this about 20% bigger, so I'm going to multiply 1.2. And then I want to accept it. So now my part is about 20% bigger. Now what if I wanted to go back to the other one? I can just come up and double click on finished. And now watch it shrink down. And then I can click on this one. And it's, it's going to be a little bit larger. So that's how you can make these configurations work for you. So we, let's go back into our uh, feature manager tree over here. And we did not have a material selected. Um, let's come back. I'm going to go back to configurations. And I want to select the finished part. I'm going to come back to my feature manager tree. I want to come to the material. I want to right click on it. I want to edit the material. And then I want to scroll this down until I get to other metals. And then I want to come select tungsten, apply, and close. And that way we could come and take a look and find out what this thing actually weighs. We could come up to evaluate and select mass properties. And it should be somewhere around here about 0.03 pounds, so this is a fairly small part, even though this is very heavy material. So if your volumes and everything are pretty close to volumes, mass, and surface area pretty close to this, it's probably nothing more than merely a rounding error. So if that's in that shape, please uh, save this out in the proper naming format and submit it in your learning management system. Thank you, and we'll see you with the next one.